From a drifting ship in Belgium that took out a massive crane, and a cargo ship in Singapore that accidentally pit-maneuvered another vessel, to a cruise ship in Venice, Italy that was way too big for the tiny pier, and a carnival liner in Alabama that smacked clean into another boat. Here are some of the craziest ship collisions and mistakes ever caught on camera. Antwerp, Belgium is the largest city in the country and home to about 536,000 people. It also hosts the Port of Antwerp, one of the largest shipping ports in the world. Vessels leave through the Scheldt River, entering the North Sea, and then it's on to wherever their final destination takes them. Ships coming into port follow a similar route. On December 9th of 2019, a 1,000-foot container ship from Mexico City arrived in the port of Vossland, an extension of Antwerp's main hub. It moored in the water, and the crew waited for their next direction. That's when the wind picked up and pushed the container ship loose. All anybody could do was watch as the boat drifted toward the dock and a massive loading crane. According to reports, the wind was blowing over 46 miles per hour. The behemoth acted more like a steel sail. It caught the wind and ripped clean from its mooring. Local authorities did everything they could to reroute the ship. They sent tugboats and other crafts to try and prevent the accident. Luckily, nobody was hurt when the crane collapsed. The Coast Guard arrived shortly after and moored the ship. This time, it wasn't going anywhere. The vessel suffered minor damage and needed repairs before she could sail again. Meanwhile, they had an even bigger headache to clean up on the dock. The port of Antwerp is the second busiest in Europe, behind Rotterdam in the Netherlands. As you can imagine, an accident like this sets them back significantly. It took several days to clear the debris and reopen the port. The Singapore Strait measures 70 miles long by 12 miles wide. It connects the Malacca Strait on Singapore's west coast to the South China Sea on the east coast. About 2,000 ships will travel these waters on a daily basis. They range from small merchant ships to giant bulk carriers and everything in between. With all that open water, you'd think it'd be impossible for two ships to crash into each other, especially the bigger ones. Well, that's exactly what happened on March 4th of 2013. The Bex Halil, a Vietnamese bulk carrier, tried to overtake a smaller cargo ship. Instead, they accidentally executed the perfect open water pit maneuver. According to the Port Authority, the Bex was trying to pass the smaller ship but couldn't veer left due to oncoming traffic. So they tried to execute this extremely risky maneuver. Unfortunately, the smaller ship turned left at the worst possible moment. The Singaporean Coast Guard sprung into action and rescued crew members on board the smaller ship. Thankfully, everybody was okay and happy to be back on dry land. Somehow, the crash didn't disrupt shipping traffic on the Singapore Strait. Now, it's tough to hit all of Italy in one vacation. Rome, Sicily, Tuscany, the list goes on and on. Those vacationing in northern Italy usually end up somewhere near Venice. The city is built on 118 small islands separated by canals. 
Over 400 bridges link each city section, making it one of the most unique places on Earth. Now, obviously, you need a lot of small boats to navigate those canals. But what happens when a monster cruise ship tries to dock nearby? Well, on June 2nd of 2019, a vessel named the MSC Opera tried to find out. Well, we don't have to get off the boat. Hold on, hold on. Hold on! Hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. it's getting the pier. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. Are you kidding me? No. Let's push that boat out of the way at least. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I've held them on, sweetheart. Oh I think we've gone straight through the pier. By the look of it. No, here it goes. We haven't hit it oh at speed. Oh my god. I think our trip's just good. I think we're off. What happened? I don't know what happened. I've got no idea what happened. Well, what happened is that the dickhead steering the boat didn't steer it right. I saw, when I saw him he turn on. And we weren't put moving. Yeah. Oh my god. I just hope nobody got hurt down below. I know. I hope no one's died, no one's got killed down there. Yeah, they hit, hit it. They hit the boat and the pier. the pier. To be clear, Venice has special canals to accommodate cruise ships. It'd be silly if it didn't, given all the tourism. This accident was not the captain's fault. The ship experienced engine failure and began drifting toward the pier. Tugboats raced to try and prevent the ship from crashing, but it was too big to stop. The crash drew some harsh criticism from the local people. It was only a matter of time before something like this happened. To them, these cruise ships are more of an eyesore, if anything. Even the mayor, Luigi Brugnaro, called for a change. There's no way these ships can keep passing through Venice without another major incident. When the Spanish settled Puerto Rico in the 16th century, they named it Ciudad de Puerto Rico, which translates to rich port city. San Juan, the capital city, is the second oldest European established capital in the Americas. Today, San Juan is home to 342,000 people and a booming tourism industry. On Valentine's Day of 2019, a Norwegian cruise ship simply named Epic was on a seven-day adventure through the Eastern Caribbean. On their way to the Virgin Islands, the passengers were informed of mechanical issues on board the ship. The plan was to stop in San Juan to resolve the problem. Little did they know, it was about to get much worse. Yeah. Norwegian Cruise Lines said a local pilot was directing the captain with the help of several tugboats. Then, the wind picked up and pushed the vessel too close to the pier. Those platforms you see sinking are called mooring points. They're supposed to hold the ship in place. Instead, they sank to the seabed. Thankfully, nobody got hurt during the crash. The ship suffered minimal damage and was able to continue its journey.
The Meyer Werft is an old shipyard in Papenburg, Germany. Founded in 1795, they got their start making small wooden ships. Today, they're known for building luxury cruise liners. In September of 2015, a 1,000-foot Norwegian cruise liner called the Escape was wrapping up construction. It was moving backward down the Ems River, en route to the North Sea. Along the way, it came upon a small dock with some tugboats. What was supposed to be a routine sail-by turned into a complete catastrophe. The wake created by the side propellers was enough to throw water over the tugboat and sink it. Several people run out to try and save the tugboat while the cruise liner keeps moving. We can't say for sure if the captain even knew what happened. While the sinking tugboat was a tragic accident, this video is a testament to the architectural marvels that are luxury cruise liners. Most of them have 20 decks and are over a thousand feet long. They contain thousands of cabins, rooms, and amenities for guests to enjoy. You can even see a water slide on top of this one. Now, according to Royal Caribbean, modern cruise ships can easily cost a billion dollars to build. It all depends on the ship's capacity. Anything that can accommodate over 3,000 people is easily $750 million. It's safe to say the sinking tugboat didn't hurt Norwegian's bottom line. Bangladesh is a Southeast Asian country on the northern tip of the Bay of Bengal. It sits sandwiched between India and Manipur and is home to nearly 170 million people. That's about half the U.S. population crammed into a country the size of Illinois. Unfortunately, Bangladesh is notorious for maritime disasters, like this accident from 2021. The ferry crash on November 1st of 2021 was overshadowed by three other accidents. One in May, another in April, and a third in late December. We're not sure what led up to this disaster, but it was certainly a harrowing experience for everyone involved. As the ship rolled, passengers and vehicles tried to flee as fast as they could. The situation devolved into chaos as trucks and people jumped from the ship. The ferry kept listing as the weight came off. That means the exit ramp kept getting higher and higher. The last driver out had a tough decision, ditch the truck and jump for safety or try to clear the ramp. They obviously made the wrong choice. Things get extra scary when a woman is found trapped on the side. The footage cuts without showing how she got there. Now we think she climbed from an upper section and waited as the ferry listed to move on to the side. Off to the left, you can see another man climbing down and swimming away. A few more people join her up top. They consider jumping into the water, but the crowd begs them not to. At the end of the day, the safest place to be was on top of that sinking ship. Mobile, Alabama is the second largest city in the state behind Huntsville. Nestled on the Gulf of Mexico, they function as Alabama's only saltwater port. The Port of Mobile has always played a major role in the city's economic health. It began as a trading post between the French and Native Americans. Today, it's the 12th largest port in the United States. 
In 2013, a ship repair company called BAE Systems operated in the port. Unfortunately, a downturn in business forced them to downsize and close years later. During their run, one of their workers captured some amazing footage. A carnival cruise ship broke loose during a storm, and it was headed right for them. Oh! Oh! Kissing it! Kissing it! Oh! Connection, baby! Holy moly! It damn show did, son. Carnival said the ship broke free due to strong winds. According to the National Weather Service, wind speeds peaked around 66 miles per hour around the mobile shipyards. The Carnival cruise ship was already undergoing repairs when it broke loose. Before the accident, repairs were estimated at around $5 million. After the crash, that price tag could have easily doubled or tripled. The Bosphorus Strait, also known as the Istanbul Strait, is a 19-mile body of water connecting the Black Sea to the Marmara Sea. That leads to the Aegean Sea, then the Mediterranean Sea, and eventually the Atlantic Ocean. Needless to say, it is a vital body of water. Vessels pass through no matter rain, sleet, or snow. In mid-January of 2017, a monster snowstorm battered the Istanbul area. Visibility was near zero, but that wouldn't stop maritime traffic. Locals gathered near the strait when they saw a mammoth cargo ship getting too close for comfort. <laughs> As the story goes, strong winds blew the vessel off course during the snowstorm. It was loaded about a hundred feet high with shipping containers. If it crashed into the seawall, there's no telling how much damage it would have caused. Thankfully, the skilled captain maneuvered away at the last second, avoiding catastrophe by a few inches. Hours after the incident, officials closed the Istanbul Strait until the storm passed. We're thinking someone important saw how close that ship came and decided it wasn't worth the risk. International trade would have to wait a few hours. The Chao Phraya is a multi-source river flowing from northern Thailand through Bangkok and into the Gulf of Thailand. On October 11th of 2022, a dense fog moved over the Bangkok approach channel. It was hard to see anything past the bow of your ship, especially on the larger vessels. The Vasi Star, a Liberian-registered container ship, entered the water. At the same time, a tugboat was lugging four giant barges toward the city. Neither saw the other until it was too late. Oi, The tugboat had four barges in tow. Each was carrying coiled metal sheets when the Vasi Star smacked into them. The Maha Nakhon II sustained the most damage and sank along with its cargo. Thankfully, nobody got hurt during the crash. Our cameraman on the tugboat was lucky the container ship hit the barge and not their vessel. Aftermath footage shows where they left the sunken barge in its watery grave. Authorities urged other boaters to avoid the area until crews could get out and remove the wreck. Funny enough, another ship nearly hits it again. International ocean trade is a very delicate system. One tiny mistake can topple the entire house of cards. 
So, when two cargo ships collided in the Marmara Sea on October 24th of 2021, everyone wondered what happened. The Beni Tamu, a 1,000-foot vessel, was carrying cast iron ore from Ukraine to China. Meanwhile, a slightly smaller ship, the BC Vanessa, was carrying wheat from Egypt to Bulgaria. At around 6 a.m. local time, both ships were on their way to an anchor zone in the Marmara Sea. From there, they'd head through the Dardanelles Strait and into the Aegean Sea. That's when a thick fog moved over the area, bringing visibility down considerably. The BC Vanessa basically T-boned the Beni Tamu, damaging the hull and causing water to leak in. The Vanessa suffered severe damage to its bow but was able to sail to an anchor spot in eastern Turkey. The real concern was for the Beni Tamu and the crew on board. The ship was either dead in the water or anchored at the collision site. Either way, the people weren't going anywhere. Thankfully, a few tugboats and salvage vessels were around to save the crew. Nobody got hurt during the crash, and the Beni Tamu eventually joined Vanessa at the Turkish salvage yard. If you enjoyed this video and want to see another one just like it, then be sure to click the link on screen now. As always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.